You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Success has come at a cost. I don't consider myself as being a good father. Listen, there's, like I said before, there's events, you know, that he's missed in bits and pieces, but it shows now it was worth it. You know, now them times have been and gone, it is what it is, you know. You have to make sacrifices for success. It speaks for itself. It's there, the evidence is there. But years worth of evidence back up whatever you want to look into and, and, and try and investigate, you'll find out that it was me. The first thing you've got to do is believe. The second thing is you've got to achieve. I used to trust relatively easy. You know, that my motto used to be, I used to trust until they give me a reason not to. But I learned that that is not the way it should run. Trust should be earned, not given. The thing that kept me fired up was sheer embarrassment. Sheer, it was the shame, actually, that kept me going. That's, you know, a sad thing to admit, but it's true. It was the shame of what happened on the journey that, that, I, that, I, that I've had has been, I, I, I swear this, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It hasn't been easy. That's a hard question, to be honest. Um... Boom, we're on. And today we've got a very special treat. We've got Alfie Jr. and Alfie Sr. Like, two men I have high regards for. Like, unbelievable respect for what you do, what he's achieving. What he's done in life, how far he's have come. Like, I know I've had you both on separately. Both great views, both amazing comments. Like, how are these lads? I'm good, James. Thank you for having us back. Everything's good, James, and thanks for having us back. Yeah. Definitely. How is it sitting next to each other for this podcast? Do you know what? It's the first one we've done together. Do you know what I mean? To, to be fair, on the way here, I was thinking to myself, do you know what? I, I don't know where it was going to go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To be honest, I'm, uh, I'm actually very looking forward to it at the same time, you know. I've still got that little bit of doubt. I don't know what he's going to say. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if he's going to expose me. <laughs> How is it sitting next to your son today for a kind of uh, conversation? I suppose a bit of a compliment uh, because obviously he's making his own way. Um and from any father, doesn't matter how small or how big it is, when you see your own son making their own way in life, then that's, uh, I take a little bit of a compliment out of that myself. So, you know, if somebody, uh, if somebody's doing on their own journey, you've only got to give them a pat on the back for it. Yeah. How's it been being a man of your calibre to, with children, your son, like how hard is it to, to balance both? Um, <sighs> It's a, it's a good question. For me, James, um, success has come at a cost. I don't consider myself as being a good father or, um, the, you know, the loving times and the, and the cuddles and the kisses, you know, are not the sort of thing that, that has happened in my household. Um, and it also comes with a lot of arguments and rows that how you're bringing your kids up i've brought my children up uh alfie and I'm, i think he'd be first to admit it i brought him up hard because you know you can give your children as much as you like but trust me there's going to be plenty of people out there that want to take it off of them so i'm i'm a great believer in the school of hard knocks you know alfie boxes boxed all of his life he goes to work um, and he's now paddling his own canoe. So how far he's going to get now is up to him. Am I always going to be there? As long as I can be. But the hard thing for a parent is not being an easy parent. That's the hard thing. Anybody, when you have it in your pocket, can give to your kids because you want them to have more than what you did. Now, I think my children have... I've had a bit of that, but they've also had a bit of the hardship. Um, I wouldn't say to the level that a lot of people have had it, 
but certainly to a level where they've had to go out and get it themselves. And I see the criticisms um, that sometimes that Alfie gets, which, to be fair, it brings a wry smile to my face because I think to myself, you idiot, you know, you really just don't know. There was one particular fella, he doesn't rise to it, but I do, that, that messaged him, daddy's money and this, that and the other. He messaged me. So I went back, I said, you're absolutely right. I said, my dad gave me everything. What did your dad give you? But he didn't realise it was me. But, you know, it, it, it's not an easy job. That's yeah. what I would say. Did you feel that, Alf, as a kid? Uh, that, yeah, I did. I did. Uh, do you know what? It's the time more than anything. Not the money. The money's irrelevant. It's the time not being around. Like there was fi things I'd done when I was younger. It was at all my boxing fights, which was good. But there was other events which he had to miss because he was working. But obviously the benefits are now showing. And that just shows how successful he is now. But th there's sacrifice that has to come with that, like he says. Yeah, there's always some sort of pain that comes with sacrifice. There's always going to be people let down. The same as myself. I've got kids back home and I'm always down and on the road working. But my excuse is I'm doing it for them. But I question it. Am I doing it for them? Am I doing it for my own ego, own drive, own <laughs> personal gain? Like, but then you're saying you're re he's a reaping the rewards now. He's a sitting here on a podcast talking about a discussion about your personal lives that... Like, that takes guts as well, so it shows you how far he's have come. But I question my motives. Am I doing the right thing? Because what I've realised now, time is the most precious thing on this planet. And am I utilising utilising it correctly to be the better father I can be? C can I ask how old your children are? They're both 12. <clears throat> what I would say, they're, they're at a pinnacle age now, James. 12-year-old mm -hmm. is the age where they start to slowly develop into teenagers and that's when they start to develop their own mind. And from my point of view, um, I am proud of Alfie, really proud of him on what he's done. Has it come with a lot of arguments? Yeah. Has it come with me and him having, you know, not physical fights, but argument fights? Yeah. Has there things that he's done that I wouldn't have done? Yes. Has he been right? Actually, 50% of the time, yeah. But that's somebody becoming their self. Now, um, what I would say is every man has to be in charge of his own destiny. You, me, and Alfie. But the one thing that we can be blessed with, and I certainly was blessed with it, was as much as I didn't agree with my own father, in certain ways, there is one trait that runs through his blood that certainly runs through mine. And I know for a hundred percent it runs through Alfie's and that's work ethic. My dad is a Trojan. I'm the same. Alfie's the same. And there's, there's two things that I'll bring up and then I'll, I'll let Alfie tell you the story, but we were walking down the, the, street in Vegas when he was seven or eight years old, about that age. I'd have said a little bit older, I'd have said 12, 13. And so 12 or 13, and he looks up at one of the uh, casinos, and I think it was Treasure Island. Or, it was Treasure Island. It was Treasure Island. And he said, I'm going to buy that. I went, good boy. That's exactly what you should do. You make sure that you get that ball. So we went back, I think it was for the Tyson Fury fight, yeah. wasn't it? And we're walking down and he went, do you remember, Dad? And I swear to you, I was thinking the exact same thing when he said it. He said, when I said I was going to buy that, he said, Jesus. He said, I didn't realise how much hard work it takes to do that, to get there. And I, went, I said, well, don't give up. It's still achievable. And I genuinely believe he will buy it. You know, it might not be that one, but he will buy one of them. Um, you know, the first thing you've got to do is believe. The second thing is you've got to achieve. And like just yesterday, I said to him, I said, like, should we go to the Andy Garcia fight? Is it Andy Garcia? No, Ryan yeah, Garcia. Ryan Garcia and... Um, yeah, that'll be some fight, that. Javon oh, Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank Davis all. Wasn't that though? <clears throat> and he said to me, he said, no, nah, he said, I don't think, he said, I want to take the time off of work. That's exactly what I would have said. Um, so, 
And by the way, I was offering to pay for that trip. Mm-hmm. Not for the hotel, but <laughs> well, if you're looking for a co-pilot, mate, I'm willing to ha- I'm willing to jump on that with you. Did you do you see that? I'll feel like, Do you see a lot of yourself in your dad? That's a hard. That's a hard thing. I, I get told yes, but I can't speak from getting out of my body and looking at myself. Mm-hmm. I get told yes, and like I say, work ethic more than anything. Listen, I've made choices that he wouldn't have made. A lot of stuff <laughs> I run past him. But the thing is, I run past him to see what his opinion is. That doesn't mean necessarily to determine whether I'm going to do it or not. Like, he's not always right. I'm sure he's made plenty of mistakes himself. Oh, I'll have you know I'm right, most of them. <laughs> how, how is it for you about when your dad's at the top of the tree, like everybody respects him, the businesses that he's built, is that, I'd imagine that's more, has that added more pressure onto your life to try and succeed to your dad's level as well? Of course it has, but it comes with plenty of benefits too which I've mentioned in previous podcasts, it comes with loads of benefits, doesn't it? You know, I've, I've got a head start further than most. You know, I'm, I'm coming off the back of a brilliant name, which means a lot in this day and age, especially in business. Is that, see, when you're doing your business and that, does your dad's name get through in or can you do it all on your own? Does people always try and mention your dad as well? It's either in or there. If they do, it's great. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of him. It's great. I did, that doesn't bother me. It's, I, I, I want to hear that. I think I'd be in a worse position if they wasn't mentioning him. See, when you start becoming successful, I'll feel that. How hard is it to trust people around you? Uh, actually, I think it gets easier to trust people as you're going along because you get to know who your circle is. And what I would say to you is the starting point should be trust nobody and ask nobody to trust you. And what it should be, the good people will know exactly what you mean. Because by asking someone not to trust you, you're not saying you're not trustworthy. What you're saying is look out for me and check. Check and double check. Because you know, if we keep looking out for each other and not just accepting what everybody's saying, what each other's saying, do you know what happens? You make less mistakes. And that's what good people around you should do. So your circle will become smaller. When did you ever have? Did you ever have the discussion with each other about your work ethic as when Alfie was younger to then being what? in and out, not in and out his life, but <clears throat> working so hard where I to remember, try and make it sense to him? I remember one particular conversation when we were driving down the A30. I don't know if you remember it, and you and we were just coming to the roundabout, and you said to me, "Your work ethic, Dad, is stronger than mine." And I said to him, I said, that's where you're wrong. I went, muscle memory does feed through. I said, my blood flows through your veins. I went, work ethic is just a good habit. And, you know, what also helps with work ethic is when you get to taste just a little bit of success, it can be just a small amount. It drives you. Look at yourself, James. You just said to me earlier, now you're on a roll. And that's that little bit of success creates more success. And that's what's happening with Alfie. You know, he's now doing uh, yeah, he, his uh, business, Best Kettles. He does the watches. He's got two mobile home parks. And he's now doing tickets. Um, and, you know... There's not much more he can do, and he's doing them diligently. Um, on a property in Knightsbridge, what I'm Airbnb in, which I'm yeah. looking to expand. But I'm <laughs> learning on the job. Got the flat for myself, looked into it, thought to myself, right, there's an opportunity there, which is a brilliant location, prime location. I'd say the best, really. You know, literally right bang smack next door to Arrods. And I thought, you know, I'll give it a crack, which it seems to have been working. Can I ask, on that, what's that red light doing outside that? <laughs> 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 you don't want to know. <laughs> You're still young, out. what are you, 27? 25. 25, man, like fucking hell, that. Like. Having properties, I know how hard you work as well. I see your stories on Instagram. I see you're constantly hustling. And rightly so, you've got a good life as well. You travel the world, man. Look, why not enjoy it as well? See, when you've, again, see when you're working as hard, do you feel as if you've got <coughs> the added pressure again to prove that it's you that's behind it, doing it yourself? I'm sure that speaks for itself. It's only ever small-minded people that look and think, it, it speaks for itself. It's there, the evidence is there. 
years worth of evidence back up whatever you want to look into and, and, and try and investigate you'll find out that it was me listen I've got my dad behind me overseeing me which is great there's 40 years worth of experience I'd be a fool not to use that and one thing I would think I'm not is a fool mm -hmm. I think the most wisest thing to do listen we do not live long enough to make all the mistakes ourselves you've got to learn from the mistakes of others you know and once again I think it's just best that I learn from that and being overseen and going and asking for advice, that's not a bad thing. If, if, that, if, if people want to criticise me for that, I hold my hands up. How do you think it is to survive in this day and age, Alf, compared to the 80s, 90s, that with think, social media and that involved as well? Look, I, I'm a dinosaur. <clears throat> I'm a dinosaur. I'm an old-fashioned businessman that's a dinosaur. You know, people like um, Richard Branson, Alan Sugar, and forgive me for saying, but I see myself there with them. Oh, a million percent. And we're dinosaurs. We are dinosaurs. We're in a new age, <clears throat> digital age, where I feel that business has a far, far superior reach. And I think if you can cater into that and factor into that and nurture it, exactly what we were talking about, people's network with one of your previous guests, you know, the moment you get that network to expand, you can be a worldwide brand, pretty much overnight, you're no longer relying on newspaper or TV. There are so many other avenues. So for me, do I think it's easier? No. It's never easy. If it was easy, we wouldn't have 1% of the population being the richest. We'd have 99% of them. It's always going to be hard. But what I would say is we're in a new age, that age is digital technology. The thing now is to make sure that we're embracing it. I'm a dinosaur. I'm still doing business in an old-fashioned way, but that's what I do best. Don't broke. Don't fix what's not broke. No. So you, do you think, <clears throat> how do you feel, feel you would have adapted if you were born in this generation? Do you think you would have got there quicker? Phew, that's a good question. I'm, look, I may not have succeeded at all. You know, I may, but what I would, have, but what I can say to you is, it wouldn't have stopped me trying. And I believe anybody that tries, I had somebody message me on Instagram, I'm, I'm so tired of trying and I don't feel that I'm a success. My reply to them, because I try to, I want everybody to su succeed. When people try and people are pushing forward, I want them to succeed. So my message back to them, you're already a success. You started, didn't you? And most people don't even ever start. They don't even try. So do I think I'd be a success in this day and age? Um, I don't know. All I can tell you, I would have given it my best. We were born with the name best, so we make sure we're at the front of the queue. That is a great name. How do you think you would have handled being in your dad's era? I'm finding it hard enough now. <laughs> um, listen, like he says, I would have tried my best, regardless when or when I wasn't born, I would try my utmost best. Listen, what I lack for in intelligence, I will make up in, um, in persistence. And I think, listen, it's a formula that works. Mm -hmm. You know, like a, a, a hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work. You know, and, and I do believe hard work beats talent. You know, obviously talent helps, doesn't it? But, you know, hard work and determination and persistence, I think is the key to most things. Just keep getting out there. Listen, it's a numbers game. You knock on 10 doors, one's going to open. Do you think you're born with a gift, Alfie, to succeed? Or do you think you can train yourself to be a winner? I think both. I think we're all born with some sort of gift. I think <clears throat> Alfie's underselling himself. He's a very, very sharp thinker. Um and comes up with solutions on certain things quicker than I do. And that's not me just saying it there because he's my son. It's, you know, there's plenty of criticisms I can throw his way as well. But that one thing, he can come up with solutions on certain things quicker than I can. I think we're all born with gifts, everybody. It's if we're in an environment where the fan, somebody around you can fan that. And if um, you can nurture it yourself. There's um, <clears throat> a thing that, you know, I always say, which is do what you love and, you know, you'll never work another day, which is absolutely true. But 
to get to the point to have to do where you love, sometimes we have to do, and forgive my language, a lot of shitty jobs to do what we love. You have to do what you don't love to get to what you do to do what you love. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so for me, yeah, there's a gift. Um, uh, mine, my gift was persistence. Mm -hmm. That was my gift. Yeah, do you feel you undercut yourself a, a lot to and say certain things because you're, you're 25 and what you're doing now and what you're achieving, especially with the boxing that, the, the circles that you keep, the respect that you do get, that do you feel as if you can undercut yourself as well? To be honest with you, I think answering your question, I'm very humble because of where I come from. Look at what I'm measuring myself against. You know, it's a, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a big scale, isn't it? So that's what makes me think, you know, if you take him out of the equation, I'm extremely successful. But when you put him back in the equation, now I'm further forward than he was at my age. But still, it, it makes you humble looking at, at, at what he's done and what he's got and how successful he is. Yeah, can you see that as well? <clears throat> I feel that because, of, again, your calibre of, of man for, for a son to try and not live up to his dad's ex expectations and maybe surpass it in, in the future, but do you see that as well, that it can be a struggle? Yeah, what I, what I would say, James, we're humble people. I, and I wouldn't want us to be any different. You know, we're we're just as home as having a pint down the Nag Z as what we are going into the Savoy. And I try to, to make myself, and maybe that rubs off on Alfie as well, that... We give everybody the time of day because why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we? And, um, and, and you can learn from everybody. Everybody has, has something to give. Um, it's just that some people are giving you the wrong thing. Some people are giving you the right thing. But we're humble people. Um, when you use the word of where I am and what it is, I'm nowhere on the scale of other people. Now, you know, the, my success is measured purely on financial gain. And I don't mind telling you, I didn't do that. I headed it up. I pushed it forward with the work. But the team of people that are with me believed in me and helped me on my way. And, and I've got to say this, and I mean this also, <clears throat> my, my son, um, uh, has had a profound effect along the way because we haven't had an easy journey together. And the reason it wasn't an easy journey is because I was a difficult father. I was a hard father. You know, it's my job to push Alfie. Am I doing it right? I don't know. Let's ask in 20 years, 30 years time is, is the thing. I don't think there's no right or wrong reason. But what I do know is this, and I've seen it. If you continue just to give to your children, they will know no different and other people will look to take it. Whereas if they know how hard it is to get it, <clears throat> they won't be so easy just to give it. Mm -hmm. If you could have improved anything as a father when Alfie was younger, what would it be? I'd have beat him more. <laughs> 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 when he was a bit smaller, a bit, you can't do it now, James. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. I'm going to get a clump. But <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you would have wanted more from your dad, even though they probably gave you everything externally? Um, listen, there's, like I said before, there's events, you know, that he's missed in bits and pieces, but it shows now it was worth it. You know, now them times have been and gone. It's, it is what it is. You know, you have to make sacrifices for success. That's that's a, that's a main reason to be successful is to make sacrifices. Sacrifices the things you want to do. Sacrifice spending time with people you love. And if people don't understand that, then or, or they don't want to do that, then they're less interested in being successful. Yeah, can you accept that then? I've, I've had to. I've, yeah. I've I've never known any different. Mm -hmm. I've been brought up to know that. It's, I, I haven't known any different. Like I say, it's a trade. You trade your time for success. To get where you want to go in life, you have to make sacrifices. 
And, 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 and unfortunately, them sacrifices also do have a knock-on effect to the people around you. Yeah, definitely. Because you'll see something like he's surviving, <clears throat> he's working, he's trying to push himself to the limits. You see kids going in another direction, totally despise their family, totally despise their, their lack of love or whatever it is, turn to drink, turn to drugs, and you see them with not a pot to piss in. Like, <laughs> did you see that as well with friends, business partners and kids going the other direction? I've, I've seen very, very close friends whose children went to private school and uh, one committed suicide, the other is not well. Um, <clears throat> and and the main for that reason for that is they didn't live that life of the private education school. You know, when they came, when the kids came home, you know, they were going, what are you talking about that idiot for? We're not interested in the ozone low, we want to put food on the table. But because they thought the private education was going to make the difference. But <clears throat> what you've got to understand, if you're going that route, you've got to live that life. Now, <clears throat> I'm very blessed to, on my journey, have had some phenomenally good friends. You know, there's there's uh, Big Paul, there's uh, Simon O'Donnell, Simon McDonough, <laughs> good friends, good people, not only loyal to me, but loyal to Alfie in every way. And it isn't just, you know, we do business all together, but they're people where the loyalty comes first. So for things like that, that makes me a very blessed person <clears throat> because they're not only um, good business people, but they're also people that value the tight circle that we all have. And there's a number of other people that I could mention as well. But Alfie's now building his circle. Um, and all of a sudden, by building a great tight, tight circle where profit isn't a dirty word among you, then you're going to go a long way. And you're going to go a long way together. See, if Alfie's making business decisions, you're older than the head, wiser. But if you would you step in if you knew it was the wrong decision, or would you try and make them? Because growth is where you you lose as well. That's where you can kind of make most of it. Would you let them do that decision and just learn from it, or would you try and guide them into the right way? Right. I'll go back to what I said earlier, James. Fifty percent of the decisions that I thought that he was doing were wrong were right. Fifty percent of the decisions that he's done that were wrong some of them I thought were right you know success is not is not given just by age that's experience if you take for instance a snooker player you would assume a snooker player to get better by age they're more experienced they've been playing longer so why does it that a snooker player deteriorates? And do you know what it is? They lose their nerve to take the shot as they get older. And that is not experience. That's will to succeed. Ronnie O'Sullivan, you know, Jimmy White, they just went for the shots, you know, and they're still doing it. But you look at a lot of other snooker players, they deteriorated. And they deteriorated because they lost the nerve. Now, the young generation that's coming through, the older generation such as me, must realise that we must embrace that bravery in business where there's no fair maidens won by the faint-hearted. And that is also a blessing. Yeah. What do you think makes a good businessman, <clears throat> Alfie? Um... First of all, willing to make sacrifices. Second of all, putting the business first, among all other things, above life in general. You've got to live, you've got to live the life in business. Um, loving what you do is easy to say you love what you do, but unfortunately we can't all love what we do. It doesn't work out like that. You know, it's actually making yourself and telling yourself you're enjoying what you're doing and seeing the goal at the end. Oh, that's what works for me. Having a goal at the end of uh, 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 
at the end of the road, let's say, for yeah. me, is what uh, is, is what pushes me and drives me forward. We all need a, a little bit of a go. And going back to what you just said to me, Dad, about experience. He's speaking off experience, yes, he is, but he's speaking off of experience 30 years ago. Times have changed. So that's how sometimes it could be wrong. Because 30 years ago, it might have been the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Today, I think it could be the wrong thing to do. Seeing you were a kid, what did you want to be? I used to love boxing. I did used to love boxing, uh, but equally as much as, as much I used to love, I used to love earning money. I've 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 done I've tried all sorts of different things from being ten years old right up until today. Can you respect that hustle as well, Alfie? With they want to make money and oh, just drive. Because yes, I know people who's just lazy, man, and and some of, and they say they're okay with it, but they just they're just something missing in their life. Look, I have people come up to me and ask for advice. And uh, me and Alfie don't, we do our own thing. And the conversations are when we do have conversations, they're great conversations. They'll last 30 minutes to an hour, but they'll be intense. They always revert to business because that's what we know. That's actually um, what we understand and what we enjoy talking about. But somebody, I was with Alfie in Hatton Garden and somebody came up to Alfie and I won't mention any names. And I stood there and he said, uh, Alfie, he said, yeah, he said, I just want to say it's a privilege to meet you and can we do a photo? And, you know, I felt quite proud of that and I got that. <laughs> 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 and um, he said to Alfie, he said, Why do, what do you think I should do with this in my business? And Alfie told him. And from my point of view, he was absolutely spot on on the advice he gave him. Absolutely spot on. And it was, don't look to go out there. Like this guy wanted to bring in investors. He wanted to go out all blazing. Alfie said, listen, dip your toe in the water. He said, and it was about investing in watches. He said, go out and take your samples of watches. Find your client. He gave him the absolute cock on advice. He said, but most of all, he said, be prepared to live the life. He said, don't start at nine, start at six. He said, so you're ahead of the game. So... The guy says, and this was a man 35 years old, he went, yeah, it's not really the way I do things. He said, I like to start at 10 in the morning. I, I felt like saying, well, stay broke. <laughs> stay broke. <laughs> yeah. you, but like, you can't say that to somebody because you, they then take it as an insult. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a, you know, don't ask for advice if you don't want to take that advice because you're lazy. What's the main ingredient, do you think, to be successful? Persistence. Persistence and consistency. You know, get up, show up, dress up, but most importantly, show up and be there. For instance, when we've done anything with you, James, when have you ever seen me late or even seen him? No, late? never. On the button, you mm -hmm. know, um, because it's important that people know what, and, and I don't want this to come across the wrong way, but Alfie Best doesn't exist. He doesn't exist. I hear people talk about it. it's a brand. And, and I like the idea of it being a brand in that people know what they get. If they do business with Alfie Best, whether it's me or Alfie, they know we do what we say. Then we deliver. And that that's a benefit in itself. Mm -hmm. See, when you were doing the boxing, I'll feel like again was it more added pressure because of the family name or was that a kind of freedom for you i never really took much notice of that i used to love boxing anyway but listen when you're in a boxing ring you've got a pair of boxing gloves on you're equal it doesn't matter what's going on on the outside world what they're thinking that's completely up to them i'm sure every time anybody has a fight including myself you think of of, of why you want to get in there you just want to win for a start that's what i do I want to win, regardless of what I'm doing. Any area of my life, I just want to win. So I didn't say it with any more added pressure. Like I say, listen, he's only a human being at the end of the day, mm -hmm. regardless who I am. How was it watching your son box? Well, I'm going to be 
if I can back up, you asked me earlier on if there's anything <clears throat> that I've done that I would have changed. And I just, and there is actually, yeah. When we were doing the boxing and I trained Alfie and I was a coach down at the Chesham, I took it very, very serious. I took it as if it was a job and very intensely. And that was a mistake. It should have been much more fun. And I could have made it a lot more fun. And I didn't. And, uh, I, you know, Alfie was trained like a pro. And I think that also knocked the stuffing out of him a little bit because it was a job. It wasn't, wasn't fun. I think he, he enjoyed certain aspects of it, but he was running five days a week, twice a day. You know, I had nutrition's coming in and crazy stuff mm -hmm. when you're thinking it's kids. But whatever I do, I do it to the, to the best ability. But going back to your other question, any father that sees their son get in the ring has two things, proudness and fear, because nobody wants to see their kids get hit. And that's exactly what you're responsible for doing. You're putting them in there to get it. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that kind of the fun took away from it with your dad's kind of succeeding for the best for you, even though it could have maybe pushed you away from it? It was very hard. I don't know if I felt it at the time, but it's easy when you're past that stage of your life to look back and say, I would have done this, this, and this, and this. Because then once again, you're speaking from experience, aren't you? You've done it. You know, so it's easy to look back and say, oh, I will change this, oh, I will change that. When you're there, when you're there doing it, you, 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 you'd concentrate on the job in hand. Do you think sometimes maybe you were looking at it as a, not a business, but instead of a loving father, it's kind of a business at the end of the day, knowing how to succeed. So you try to push 100%. and not cut every corner. 100%. It's about the winning. Mm -hmm. So you then take a lot out of it. And look, to be fair, like we're having this... Um, interview now or podcast and uh i'm saying to alfie you know i made a mistake there that was one of my mistakes one of many but hopefully when he has children he'll learn from that and think hold on i ain't gonna make that fuck up that my dad made there and overtrain my kids i'm gonna make this a little bit more fun a little bit more enjoyable if he even decides to take his children that route boxing um I personally think in the world we live in now is an absolute necessity for any child, girl or boy, to look after themselves because the world isn't getting easier. It's getting harder. What do you think makes a good parent? Well, I've been blessed with very good parents, my mum and dad. But please believe me, there are times I could kill my mum. I could just choke her. <laughs> <That's saying. laughs> but I said, I know yeah, how you feel. Sorry, <laughs> mum, but I was being honest. <laughs> but the truth is, she'd take her heart out of your body and give it to you if you needed it. Or, you know, it, it, so I don't know what makes a good parent because I try to look at what other people have done. I try to look at what I've done. Um... And what I would say to you is bringing kids up, um, they've all got their own character. So I only did what I thought was right at each time. Do I think I was too hard as a father? Yeah, I do. Would I do it any different? Yes. I wouldn't have been as hard in the boxing. I would have would not changed a thing about the business discussions because even if Alfie only to succeeds where he is now, he's already a success. He's got two mobile home parks, which he has bought and paid for himself. No matter what anybody else says. Yes, he's got mortgages on them, but he's failed at a number of things and he's succeeded at others. That's a success. Mm -hmm. So I feel that for my own self-satisfaction, I've done my job. But also a lot of credit goes to his mum. You know, his mum 
has been a big supporting arm for Alfie. And, you know, when I've not been the person that I should be to be able to talk to, there's been a lot of those times because when you're in business and you're under a lot of stress and your head's about to explode because you've got a deal that you can't complete and it's running to the wire, you know, you're... You have misdirected anger and you're like, leave me alone. I'm in the middle of this or whatever. His mum's been there for him. So there's a there's a lot of credit got to go to her for that as well. But what I would say, and I, and I think this is the case, it's made you a much stronger person on how to deal with pressure on a daily basis. Absolutely. Is that right or not? 100%. 200%. Hearing your dad says it would make changes <clears throat> to be a better father. If you had a son, would you do things differently? Because you know the sacrifices your dad's had to make to, again, provide the life and the opportunities that you have. It's like, it's two sides of the coin, but what coin do you, what side do you choose? If you've got the son there, your, your career's popping off in your 30s, like, do you then make the sacrifices to go to your dad's level or do you decide, okay, I've listened to my father, like, what do you do? I think the time has come now with, hopefully I have children, I want children. I would involve them in the business from a younger age. Like it's come to that stage where I'm going to be big enough. It's going to be a, a, um, a franchise, if you like. I would want to involve them into the business more. I think it's come to that stage where we don't need to go off to different angles. I think I've keep everything in house. And I think because again, then I haven't got to separate my time. I was going to just add a little candid joke and just say, we choose the winning side. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you be, can you be so successful at your height and have the, not the loving family, love's always going to be there, but the time and effort for your family as well. Is that, is that even possible? No, I don't think so. But I'm going to be, if you want to get to the next level. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If you want to like, stop and live, the, to live your life, then no problem. But yeah. if you want to get to the next level and excel, definitely not. No, I, I'm, I agree with Alfie. You know, you either love the business to let the business love you, no matter what that business is. Otherwise, it'll take its love somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what happens with anything. Um, you know, very... It's a... You know, life is not easy. Um, and time is one of the most precious things that we can do, but... I, on on the journey that that I that I that I've had has been I, I I swear this I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It hasn't been easy. It really it's been punishing, and I see other people that have been successful, very successful, and their success came through sheer beautiful talent. I'm not saying they didn't have to work in it, but what I found from, from, you know, you study people and you look at see people, is their success left them very easily as well because it came easy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, just like a lottery winner. If it comes easy, Tends to leave easy, leave easy. Success is no different than a woman. You know? She's easy to get. She's easy to leave. Yeah. See, when you, you kind of lost everything and you were in the van sleeping, I think you were 21, 22. Mm. Like, how did you get, how did you find the fire to then get that back instead of quitting like the majority of people? I didn't. I ran the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me tell you the. The thing that kept me fired up was sheer embarrassment. Sheer, it was the shame, actually, that kept me going. That's, you know, a sad thing to admit, but it's true. It was the shame of what happened that kept me going. And even more shameful that I was driving a brand new Porsche and had to go and get a 70 quid a week job and living in a 500,000 pound house and having to sleep in the back of an escort van. That, you know, you know, but you, you, you're still the same person. You're just not the same person to everybody else. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
You know, people want your advice when you're successful because they think you've got this magic formula that works. And there is a magic formula. It really is. It's just called persistence. Mm -hmm. Digging in. You know, business is a battle. And I don't know too many soldiers that didn't dig into the battle and didn't fight hard that won. There wasn't too many walkovers, was there? You know, the walkovers happen when you've trained hard, worked hard, and trained so much better than the others. That's, that's how I mm -hmm. see it. Did you find it easy to speak to your dad as a kid? <laughs> Definitely not. It's easier now. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very difficult. To, get it. to be honest with you, he's actually, I wouldn't say become a lot softer, but to speak to him back then, it was either his way or the highway. Now he's open for a discussion. Before there was none of that. Why do you think that is? I think, uh, in my mind, you have to know when you're the father and when your advice and how I look at it, when children are children, then they should be listening to their family's advice. And you can't have an eight-year-old or 10-year-old or 12-year-old kid giving you advice on business. You know, they're at that stage, they're a sponge and they should be soaking up the knowledge around them. So yeah, I was hard. Now, I'm no longer dealing with a child. I'm now dealing with my equal. I'm dealing with somebody that is genuinely my equal. Why? Not in experience, but in 50% of the experience. But the other 50%, he makes up for what I don't have. And that is that willpower and drive that, do, that wanes on everybody as they get older. That's why the old Indians sat around the fire and still let the Braves go out to the battle. When you see another, when Alfie has a, another Alfie Junior, how do you think you'll be as a grandparent? Um, I will try not to be a parent. That's Alfie's job. But what I will try to do is still instill the work ethic there. But my job is not to be, that's Alfie's job, and to any grandparent that wants to take away that privilege from the children. Um, you know, the, the benefit of being a grandparent is you can get to give them back. I just think that shows you, you're both characters. Like, to be even sitting here today and having quite personal discussion about life and kind of not being there, but you've given them, like, it's, it's, that's powerful stuff, man, that's like, it's to understand and, and doing it in front of the masses as well. That, even though people might think, oh, you've had it easy, your dad's, you ain't had it easy either. And you've still got the fire to try and succeed and trying to achieve things. And for me, that, that's the, the ingredient for anything in life. But that, but that is why, because <clears throat> I haven't had it easy. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, where I'm at, I get so close to seeing the good life and I want it. And I'm not saying it's been bad, far from it. <clears throat> but it could have been a lot better. Every single day could have been. You know, you could have hung the gloves up and gone, there you go. Do you know what I mean? Go run. Free will, go and do whatever you want. And, and, uh, but within the last 10 years, that could have happened. But it never has. And it's made me want it all the more. That's that another thing as well. If somebody's got money. I know people's not got money and they fuck their kids off. You've not, even though you, you've done your thing and you, you worked to provide and, and be the winner that you are, that you never just, you never, why did you never just let them be and do their own thing without dad? I've, I've seen a lot of friends do it. And... I've also seen a lot of their children take advantage of. I've got to be honest with you. Up to now, Alfie really hasn't brought any problems to my door. And the one or two problems have been learning curves um, from what I see as dogs of friends that thought they were going to benefit out of something that Alfie had done. Um, but they were great learning curves for Alfie um, because you get to see who the, who the, who the real dogs are and uh, it, it sets you up for the rest of your life because a dog's a dog and it's always going to be a dog. Mm -hmm. Do you see, is it, do, you, do people try and use you as well when you're younger with the status that your family name has or were you surrounded by good people as well or were you protected from them? No, that, <clears throat> to be honest, I've always very much so been very strong-headed and very much been my own man and 
I was quite, not forgiving, let's say, I, I was trusting, which I had my fingers burnt. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Like I used to, uh, I used to trust relatively easy. You know, that my motto used to be, I used to trust until they give me a reason not to. But I learned that that is not the way it should run. Trust should be earned, not given. Mm -hmm. um, but when, when you're a benefit to somebody, or my, I, I come with benefits. And to be honest, the circle of friends that I choose now should come with an equal amount of benefits. Because if they come to me and ask me to do something, I will try my best to do it as a friend, but I will be coming back for a favour. And I think that's how it should work. And that's how you become <clears throat> successful. Listen, you are, uh, if you're sat around five idiots, if you're sat around five idiots, you become the sick. And that is a fact. You know, what you talk about, where you want to go, what you want to do. So people, of course, have tried to uh, leech on to me. And like, listen, I can't just make friends out of the blue. Like I say, they've, for, for me to start a relationship with somebody, I have to stop and think, what do you bring to the table? Now, that's not a horrible thing. I'm just... Very, 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 um, I'm very ambitious and I'm so concentrated on where I want to go. I can't have people take my mind off of what I want to do. Now, if you want to talk about that and help me along the way, great. Then we have something in common. The relationship can move further forward. Now, that's not a horrible thing to say. It is what it is. Like I say, I would be there for them. I can't just have people around me where I'm the benefit. I don't think it works like that or it can't work like that for me. Because then that ends up coming at a cost. You spoke about the good life. What is a good life for you? Uh, to be honest, what is the good life? To be honest, stop working, spending all the time you've got with the family. Uh, I haven't got a girlfriend at the moment. You know, travelling the world, that's the good life. And, and being able to go at your disposal whenever you want. As it stands at the minute, I can't do that. And it's not because I can't. It's because, once again, that will hindrance me from getting to where I need to go. What about the ladies, though? That <clears throat> how that I still struggle with trust, and I'm mm -hmm. and I'm only beginning my journey. But my circle, nobody gets in. But like, see, for women and knowing that what you guys have got, like, how do you know what's love and what's not? If you know what I mean, like, it's very, very, very. Because very... women can be just as bad as men. Worse. Yeah. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Do you feel that that if somebody comes into your and, life? Well, the problem is with a woman, you let your guard down. Yeah. With 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 a friend uh, uh, that you have your guard up for for a, a certain amount of time, don't you? With a woman, your guard comes straight down a lot quicker than it would, let's say. But it's a very diff it's very difficult, very difficult. Mm -hmm. it, to be honest with you, it cannot be done. It can't be it can't be noticed and until they make a mistake. Because in reality, we was actually having this conversation yesterday or the day before. Anybody can hold it together for 10 minutes. Mm. Or in reality, let's say <clears> in, in, a, in a girl's point of view, they can hold it together for an hour. Anyone can keep a good act up. Yeah, you, so, me, so, him. Some girls' cases that go for fucking years. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do you think a, a good woman in your life makes you succeed or do you think you can lose yourself? Both. You yeah. can have one bring you to yeah. your knees and yeah. then you can make one push different, you to the top. Yeah. Different men require different women. I've seen lazy men marry demanding women and the woman has made them. I've seen other men. And look, men are, we're like children. Um, we need uh, a little bit of respect. And I use the word respect in the way we want to be told how great we are. Doesn't matter what we're doing or what we're not. We want to know that, you know, we're, we're a man's man and that, uh, you know, we're out there, what is it, you know, cutting the crust and doing our job. And we want a bit of, you know, a pat on the back for that. We, we, you know, and some women don't get that. Now, I'm, I'm not into that men and women are equal. I'm not. I believe there is a natural selection where men are stronger than women. Do I believe that women can do some jobs better than men? Absolutely. Do I believe that some men can do jobs better than women? Absolutely. But it's about picking the right job for the right person. But all of this 
you know, equal. We've now got 19 different genders on left or it could even be more. That doesn't float well with me. I'm sorry, you know, a man needs to be a man, a woman needs to be a woman. I still want to be the man that holds the door for a woman. I, st I, I don't want to change. And I don't, I'm not saying that women are not to be treated equal. Actually, I think they should be treated better because a man's job is to be a gentleman for his own self-respect as well as a woman's. I just think in this day and age, though, that ladies ain't ladies the way they used to be. And if you look at Prince Harry, if you look at Will Smith, it seems as if their women wear the trousers and they've kind of forgotten who they are. Like they seem broken, they seem weak. As a man, <clears throat> it's tough. Nobody really cares for a man. No, let's be honest, nobody really gives a fuck for us. Like, we struggle the most. The like, majority of men are homeless. The majority of men are in prison. The majority of men go to war. The majority of men work shitty jobs. Like, we struggle the most. But for a man, we've just got to go on with it. Deal with it. Provide. But I feel for a woman, it's like you say, to, to love, not nurture, but pick you up and have a lo the loving home and feel good. And then you're straight back out to work the next day. Like, I just feel everybody's confused now. All this masculine energy, feminine energy. Just too much talk of it. Yeah. Like, men, the suicide rates through the roof as well. Like, something's not right in men. Do you see that as well? Have you seen men get weaker? But like back in the day, it's just go well, hustle. Nowadays, it's look, fucking struggle, struggle, struggle. I, I let, let me say this to you. I, I, I believe that there is a natural selection. Why would you want to undo that natural selection? Now, I'm not a religious person, but, you know, from a natural God-working way, from since we were, uh, the evolution began, that natural selection is there. Why would you want to undo it? Why would you want to undo it? That's it. No, I'm not a crit, um, I don't criticize anybody for what they do, what they want, but don't force it on other people. Do that yourself, whatever it is, but don't force it on other people. Mm -hmm. Just because you think it's right doesn't make it right. That's my view. Yeah, I'm the same. Like, be who you want to be as long as you're not harming yourself or kids. Or harming anybody around you, like be who you want to be. Don't force your agenda and opinion on everybody else because everybody sees the world differently. I always say this stuff, but we do. We're all raised differently. We've all got different levels of trauma. It's just the way of the world. <clears throat> but be who you want to be. And everybody can improve. If you're working a shitty job or having a shitty life, you can make those changes to better that life. Like, do you feel it important though that to have that, like, like you say, you were strong, like you were the same as myself. Sometimes I question the way I am my kids because I'm quite strict and it's just because I know how tough this world is and I don't know man like I, I do as I'm getting older I'm starting to question everything a bit more do, do you know what I would say James if you do something for the right reasons it can't be wrong because you did it with good intent it's only when you do something with a calculated reason to do something to hurt somebody it can be wrong do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, anybody can be, um, can make a mistake in how we do it. The same as, as I've said, when how I've um, been a parent and a father for Alfie. I actually, going back to that, I don't think that I've actually been a parent. I've been a mentor. I've been a mentor. And do you know, Sank? I think I'm 90% right. And I think as Alfie is getting older, He's becoming so much more of his own person, so much more of his own man. And the beauty is, this is a terrible thing I'm going to say, but a child is like a business. It'll only grow by the knowledge that it gains and the experience that it has within that business by its team. Alfie's now building his own team with the experience that I've given him and that the experience that he's made himself. Like for it, um, when um, uh, he decided to become a Muslim, was that, and he rang me on, and he said, I said, look, if that's what you want to do, that's, you know, are you doing it for the right reason? Because the only thing that I was concerned about was not the religion. Um, because if anybody should be a Muslim, trust me, it should be me. That, you know, no, but I'm not a religious person. But my only concern was, how did he take that journey to get there? 
And he's doing business with a number of different people. And that also helps, but it also gave him some good guidelines. I think we've never really had an in-depth conversation about it, but we've spoke about it. And if that's his journey, I'm proud of him for taking it. In actual fact, it shows you how much strength he has as an individual being a traveller and going out there and going, hold on, I think this can benefit me as a person. Wow. That takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength, especially being who he is. Yeah. What was the reason to join Islam? Because I believe it's the path of righteousness and it's helped, it's helped me up until this day and it's going to help me further forward. And what it says in the Quran is very much like traveller morals, which, to be honest with you, a lot of them have been lost in time amongst travellers. To be honest, but can I can I sorry, Alfred? Do you want to, it does help with Christmas. <laughs> yeah, save yourself a fortune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like I've like I've said previously, for something to help you in this, even down to getting up in the morning, I'm up at six thirty most mornings. Sometimes I miss it, but you know my intentions are very good. The Quran is about your intentions that make you a better person. Like not drinking alcohol, for example. That's brilliant. Now, you know yourself, going down the drinking route is not the way forward. Yes. That puts you back weeks at a time, weeks at a time. You do that over the course of a year. You've done two or three months in hangovers. Complete waste of time. Um, and it got introduced to me. I walked into a mosque. I felt something I've never felt anywhere else. And I thought, this is for me. So I recited it. I read the um, I read the Quran and I thought, I'm very compatible with that. So then further forward, I, got, I started speaking to people about it and, and it's paid off. Listen, my dad's there. You can ask him the question, do you seem like I've been a better person since? You were never a good person. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, look, to be fair, um, I've got to be honest with you. Um, I wouldn't say that it's made you a better person, but what it's actually done is enhanced you. Like some of the people that he's doing business with now are good people, great people. Um, that there, that rubs off on Alfie. Your circle is who you are. You know, your network is your net worth. So for me, because that was one of the things I wanted to look at the people that were actually guiding him down the road of that path. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, you know, let's look at the people behind it. Let's see the reason why. Um, but, um, was I dubious at first? Of course, of course, but I'm not a religious person. So I would be the easiest person, but some people only see one thing. They don't see, um, and look, you know, it, 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 I think from what I know of it and, uh, is, uh, the Quran is the closest religion to Christianity. Am I right in saying that? All I know is it's the only religion that hasn't been changed from when it was written to today that hasn't been tampered with. Now, I'm you, still only learning. Yeah, but if you're feeling better and it feel as if it's right for you and do it, for me, I'm not a religious man either. That there's good in both sides in every religion, same as the Quran. I, I don't drink, I'm not gambling, I'm not taking drugs, I, I don't even eat bacon. Like, the Christian, same as the Christian side, like, <coughs> there's good and bad to take from it. <clears throat> to be who you want to be, as long as you're not harming anyone and forcing an agenda on people, then so be it. Like, you can, anybody can hurt anybody. And I think when somebody hurts somebody, they blame, blame a religion or they blame a race. It's down to the individual. 100%. With newspapers and, and, and the media, they want something to attach it to, so it reaches more people. And the thing is, you're going to get more views and likes, etc. when you are connecting with the people that hate a religion or a race or a culture. You're connecting to them people, which gives it more views, more shares, and it's become a lot worse since social media has come about. But in reality, I believe it's made me a better person. Things have been working extremely well for me. And like I've said on previous podcasts, just to think that you have another 10% or 20%, which that 10 or 20% is thinking that God is behind you, which he is, it pushes you that bit further. Now that's 10 or 20% I wouldn't have had previously. Mm -hmm. there, I, there's, 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 there's not a lot really. I, I love getting up for work, please believe me. I still struggled. That was a real, real, real downside of mine. I, getting up in the morning was a struggle. Now I find it no problem. 
But that's a good thing. Like I say, if anything's benefiting you in a positive, then do it. As long as people ain't, because people can brainwash, people can force an agenda and force a belief when you buy into it and you think, okay, that's right. So it's just to question everything. What I would, um, listen, what I would say is, and I'll go back to exactly what you said, James, creed, colour, race, has no bearing on good or bad people. It is just the person. The religion has no bearing. Good person's a good person. Bad person's a bad person. And it doesn't matter what, what they are, where they are, who they are, what religion they are. Good person's a good person. The bad person's a bad person. Yeah, exactly. And they're everywhere. Yeah. How was your relationship with your mum growing up? Very good. Very good. I, had a, I was a lot closer to my mum than I was my dad. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in a, like, um, between like a, a child and a parent, relationship do you understand this and my dad was always there i would say but me and my mum was a lot closer and if i done anything wrong i would go and tell me mum did you see that as well because some mothers can disown their kids as well and it puts added pressure on the, the father He's, listen listen she stepped in didn't she alfie's mum has been an absolute trojan when it comes to her children you know um elizabeth alfie boy I don't think they could ever ask for a better mum. Um, do I think that came with some flaws? Yeah, uh, I do. Because the trouble is, uh, some of the things, and, and we can all criticise, and I'm not criticising in any way except for, that I felt sometimes she was too soft on them. You know, I was... I was the rock um, and the hammer um, and she was the cushion, if that makes sense. Um, so I suppose it worked well in that instance, but I just felt sometimes that she was overprotective um, of, of Alfie boy and Elizabeth in my, in, in my way, because what they both knew is whatever problem ever came to the door, no matter who it was or what it was, there would be nobody or anything or any entity that I wouldn't step in front and take the bullet for or take my shirt off for, no matter what, mm -hmm. no matter, and, and and put my life there. That, and and I, I think you both knew that, but where, um, but Alfie's mum, as a mum, I believe they couldn't have asked for any better. She was the cushion where I was the hammer. That's what a mother's role is, though, no? What, to, to protect the, 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 well, the energy of loving and calm and try to, if you see the father being strict or being, the the mother's there to ease it, ease the, the pain, no? Or you just want both to be I, I, your no, way of thinking? No, 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 but I just think sometimes you have to show a united front on certain things. Otherwise, children, and this is not Alfie or Elizabeth, this is any, any will work their mother or father. So if they don't get the answer what they want there, they then probe and they'll then go and get the the answer that they want. And it might not necessarily be the right answer. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I think it, it, it always needs to be a united front, um, in my view. Did you feel both sides, different energies from mum and oh, dad? Oh, 100, 100, 100%. To, to be honest, two completely different people. So mm -hmm. I'd say very, 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 very small similarities. Mm -hmm. Where do you two go for the future now? Like Alf was saying, it, wouldn't see you getting softer, but maybe becoming more loving and understanding. But where do you two then go for the future? Is it more talking with each other, understanding the patterns? And I think, well, you just... Let me, let me, he, he's still on his journey. He's still on his journey, which is still very, well, like he said, when he's, he still gets hot-headed now. He's good, he's... He's stress free at the moment, you know, because you're concentrating, we're having a good conversation with you. But in reality, he's still on his journey, Basically, and I'm on yeah. my journey, also. So, it's a uh, 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 listen. In the future, I'm sure that, that that things will become a lot closer. But still, he's he's he still works now, as he did when he was 30, 35. Not a lot. Not a lot has changed. I'm only thirty-seven now. <laughs> <laughs> You think you, but I remember speaking to you in the first podcast, and I, I says to you, "Why don't you retire?" And you says, "Why? Why should I?" <laughs> but I think that's what keeps. I know people who's retired in their seventies and have d died fucking a month later, 
my granddad smoked hash and all his mad stuff and drank and lived to fucking 88 or 87 like he Good never, he never, he never quit but like, I know people who make the changes then <clears throat> do you feel as if if you took the foot off the gas you change completely yeah, yeah 100% look for me uh, it's how far I can go how far can I take the baton um, for that you know for the next generation Alfie and Elizabeth to take it on um, and uh, I'm going to be honest with you I want to make no bones about it I want you know the family the family name to go on like the Rothschilds I really do I've been blessed as some low level dirty stinking pikey that has managed to shake off some of the stigma that's attached to that and become Europe's largest residential park home operator. Our goals are to become the world's biggest park operator and to leave a legacy instilled. Now, we're dealing with homes and real people, 16,000 of them. When I say it and think of it, I actually don't know how I got here. <laughs> I'm serious. It's the journey has taken on a life of its own. I'd love to sit here and take the credit for it all, but it just, you know. To become one of the biggest families on the planet then, like how do you put the foundations together now to prepare yourself and plan for the next 100, 200, 300, 500 years? I'm already, I'm already in discussions and talks now of setting up um, trusts and uh, where I end up being domiciled. How hard is it to pass on the baton, though, if you hit your 70s, 80s and, and somebody else putting their fingers on it? Obviously, you've got your family around you, but... I'm already I'm already passing the baton mm. because he's already on his journey in the uh, with two mobile home parks. So mm. I don't want to pass him on a job. You know, there are many people that are in business that say they're in business, but what they don't realise is they don't own a business, they own a job. Without them, it doesn't work. That's not owning a business. That's owning a job. What I'm looking to do is to pass on the baton where somebody else is running the race for them. Mm -hmm. And it's their job to make sure they're putting gasoline and feeding the fuel and the fire to keep it burning bright. That's all they've got to do. It's a difficult thing as well, especially if it's a family business, <clears> to then be stepping up to the plate and taking like 16,000 people. That's... If that business goes, fuck, you're lo yeah, so many people the, are going the, homeless, like losing 100%. Big houses. Like, would you feel that pressure if you hit maybe your 30s, 40s and you're coming on to that life? Or do you think you'll be so in, in it then you understand it better? To be honest, as it stands at the moment, I don't even... that, that To me, it's not there. Mm -hmm. I work like I've got nothing because I want to be adding too. I'm not looking to receive. To me, it's irrelevant. That is still irrelevant. I'm so tunnel visioned and concentrating on my own journey to get to where I need to get to, which is still only ever going to come to benefits at, at the end because I'm learning everything I need to know when I do step up to the mark, which I hope is not in the future. I hope he lives till he's 120. Longer than that. I think you will. Right, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> but still, like, I'm concentrating on, on, on my own thing. Mm -hmm. Which again, like you know, knowledge, uh, learning on the job. I've said this before. The learning on the job, I think, is the best form of education. And to think that something's there, I think, would take the spark out of me. To think, oh, it's all right. I've got a billion pound to rely on. It's all right. I haven't got to do nothing for the next ten years. I just set about doing nothing. When he moves on and he can't work no more, I'll have a billion pound to play with. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you understand yeah. where I'm coming from? It will take the spire and the fire out of my belly to want to do successful myself. Mm -hmm. So I do it like I say, it's irrelevant. Really proud, want him to go all the distance. I hope he makes twenty billion. But in reality, for me to think that that's what I'm going to inherit is not good for my work ethic. Do you understand? Yeah, but fair play for thinking that way, because like you say, you've seen kids go the other way. Yeah, a lot of kids who have got it and I play it fail at every corner because they've not got that something. You had that something as well to keep pushing, keep striving, to keep being better. Let's see when you are. People might look from the outside and think he's got everything. Instagram's popping, saw the great photos. Do you ever feel lonely? To be honest, the position I'm in, I would never be lonely. 
friends for me come easy and sometimes they come very cheap, but they're there for the wrong reasons. They're not friends. You know, you get a lot of people that are uh, sponges that come and sit themselves around you and they, they come, they come. And like I say, if there's not an equal amount of benefit, I don't want to be friends. And to be honest with you, you can make yourself like a person. To be honest, you can. It's, it's very, 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 uh, to say you can't, like, you know, you, you will learn to tolerate what they do. And if they come with benefits, you're a lot more likely to tolerate the bad sides. So realistic for me. No, and I've got some very good friends. My friends, a lot of my friends I've grew up with. You know, I've been family, cousins. And the people that I've been surrounded by from a young age have always been very business minded. Travellers are very entrepreneurial anyway. And uh, once again, the Islam, very entrepreneurial religion. Out of all the religions, I would say that would be the most entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. But as, as for do, do I ever feel lonely, not so, and I also have a very good family. What about yourself, Alfred? Did you ever feel the lonely journey, especially trying to get to the level you got to? I didn't have time to, to feel lonely. I think um, <clears throat> the devil makes work for the idle hands. And uh, if you, you know, when you're not busy, the mind plays tricks with people. I see it all the time. Most important thing is to make sure that you're busy. Um, I had a phone shop and uh, was in uh, first week I was in there. What I'd do is you were sitting there waiting for the phone ringing. And uh, I'd always make sure that I was ringing the yellow pages constantly um, to see if I could drum up any trade. And I virtually never did, but I was trying. Does that make sense? Like, mm. And the, the most, most, most important thing in business is don't give yourself time to manifest you know, go and brainstorm with your team. But don't give yourself time to be lazy. It's a habit. It's a habit. What makes a bad businessman? Laziness. Laziness. And I see so many people give bad advice for their own benefit. Now, Alfie just said just a moment ago that all of his friends basically have benefits. I completely endorse that. A good friend can always do something for you. A bad friend can never do anything for you. Well, how, why is he your friend? Because I know every one of my friends would do something for me. And here's the thing, I'd do it for them. Mm -hmm. Or if I didn't, I'd try. And if they didn't, they'd try. But a friend that can't do nothing for you isn't your friend. Do you feel as if the relationships got stronger with the both years as time's <clears throat> going on as well? Yeah, and I'd say so. Mm -hmm. Is that a good feeling? I'd say so. A good thing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. Listen, growing up all through your life, you have you have uh, disagreements with any of your family, um, that, my mum included. Uh, but as... as, as it feels like he's, he's explained about when I was a young and uh, how hard he was then and uh, <clears throat> how it's best for kids to know who the father is. So obviously, as I've got older, it have, of course, it's become a lot easier, easier to talk to. Like before, it, I'd be not scared, but reluctant to go and ask advice in case... Because there's, uh, there was once upon a time, I actually come to me dad and said to him, this was 10 years ago, Right, maybe even longer than that. I said, here, Dad, I, I know about a good business. Container yards to rent them out. He looked at me and went, that's a terrible idea. This, that, the other. I wouldn't do that. Stick to what you know. Six months ago, he sat down and tried to put it across to me. <laughs> he must have forgot. He, he put it across to me. But genuinely made me feel like, I don't want to go back and give him any more business advice, but mm. I remembered going and telling mm. him because I remember because I used to go cold calling and I pulled onto the yard once. I thought, well, it's you know very low maintenance, if any maintenance at all. Put a container there, rent it out. It seemed like a no-brainer at the time, and I thought I, like, I was actually expecting not. I was expecting more credit 
when I told him as a kid. Like I'd go back with these ideas to, you know, to get a pat on the back, but I didn't, it backfired. Mm -hmm. And that would happen on numerous occasions. But this one, not, it didn't pay it off because it never done it, but he come and said, I've got a brilliant idea. And I was like, well, I had that idea 10 years ago. At 12 year old, might I add. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is true. I've actually started, <laughs> I'm not on the, uh, I'm not on the, uh, on the spare land <clears throat> that, um, are you sure you said that was your I'm 100, 100, 100%. I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. Um, did that make you put, did that put you in your shell where you were scared to come forward with any ideas? Well, to be honest with you, like, you know, if you got a little bit of credit, you'd be more obliged, wouldn't you, to come forward and, and chuck more ideas out there. But when you're coming with ideas and then you're, you know, get, getting knocked back ain't nice, is it? You know, when I used to go out cold calling, to go and get knocked back, it made you reluctant to go to the next one. It made you just want to drive home. Think to yourself, right, but this ain't working. You know, it's not good for your confidence. And that's the same thing. I was looking for more a pat on the back or another avenue of why it wouldn't work. Not that, oh, that's a terrible idea. Stick to what you know. Because again, you put your point across very firmly, even at something like that. But it, it's still 10 years later. He's come back and said, what a brilliant idea this is. But here's the thing. That shows, and I'll go back to what I said about how you saw that. I didn't. Today, it's taken me 10 years to realise um, that that business works. That, again, is a flaw on my... Now, that goes to show exactly what I was saying earlier. Where I said, his thinking... And his mind for solution for problem solutions and solving them is ahead of me. It takes me time. I'm a visual person. Does that make sense? I have to see it. So that that only goes to to actually say what I said earlier. And and yes, for me, um, uh, and, he, and he's absolutely right. I've started that business. We're now flourishing that business too. Um, and uh, we could have started. 10, 10 or 12, yeah, mm -hmm. 10 or 12 years ago. The trouble is, my mind was closed on it then. Well, what do you wish for, for Alfie to be in the future? Um, what do I wish for him to be? Without this sounding um, uh, cliche, he's already on his way to being what I'd want him to become, which is a successful businessman in his own right. And that's what he's already done. So everything else from this moment forward is a bonus. Mm -hmm. um, the conversations that we have now are, I'll go back to what I said earlier, is where his fire, now I'm lucky because I'm still fired up. I still love what I do. But his fire's burning brighter than mine. Mm -hmm. So hopefully with... My experience, he can um, uh, amplify it into knowledge. And our journey as a father and son can hopefully, with the good people that we've got around us, that we're all going to benefit massively. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. my view. If you could change one thing about your dad, what would it be? That's a hard question, to be honest. Um... I don't know what to say. I don't know how to put it across without insulting anybody. I don't. I don't. Know. Give, I don't give us the insult. Go with the insult. I don't, know, I don't, know, I don't know, honestly. I don't know. Because even though for people looking in, you would think these have the perfect life because you've got to understand how successful you are, no matter what. So, can we ever be truly happy with everything? Of course not. Like, you look the level you've got. Look the bond you are. But, but like, this is the first I've done over 300 podcasts and it's the first father son one I've ever done like, people take inspiration from this and they'll also take notes because like you see you can't get to your heights with, with massive massive sacrifice so if people willing to sacrifice that then so, like, I, I'm here I mean Steph are here away for your kids we're trying to build something we're trying to feed them we're trying to live the good life but like, I know what the decision I should be making but I still always think for myself and try and make the right decision, try and convince myself I'm doing the right things, but right now it feels right for me. But for people watching us, we're thinking, you know what, fair play to the both of you, like, give me three pos positives about your dad then. Three positives. 
Well, I'd say number one is pull through when most can't or don't, which I'd, which I'd imagine would equal to all three of them. The knowledge that he comes with, obviously, that goes without saying. And his wealth, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be number one for me, mate. <laughs> what about yourself, Alfie? Three, three positives about your son. He's always got my back, even when I'm wrong. That, that I know. That I do know. Um, I'm proud of him for making his own journey. Um, but most of all, for him being my son. That's a good one. That's it. For anybody to watch and it's understanding the journey of success and try to raise a family as well, what advice would you have for them? Don't look to do it anybody else's way. Look to do it your way. Because if you get it wrong, you've got nobody else to blame. What I would say to you is the most important thing is to protect your children from the people that are around them. The better the people are around them, the better your kids will become. Mm -hmm. For yourself, Alfie, it comes some that's maybe in the life of struggling around, just maybe not not where to turn. What advice would you have for them? I've said this. Uh, I've said this enough time, and, and and I've got it from I've got it from my dad. It's just persistence, and like, you're like I've said earlier on this podcast is persistence. I'm willing to make sacrifices, and and to be willing not to do when others <coughs> are doing. You know that in the long run, it, it's it's beneficial. Mm -hmm. Like that's but the persistence and hard work is all that's paid off for me. How's it been today, guys? That having this discussion and kind of very healthy, man. These are powerful discussions. Uncomfortable, no doubt, for both of you at times. You're probably thinking, I don't want you fighting down the stairs, now. Uh, <laughs> but I, how do you feel? I've I've actually found it fairly easy to be fair with James. Mm -hmm. You make it very easy. Thank you. Uh, but you do, and uh, I've said it to you before, and this is not a back rub. Uh, you know, credit goes to you when you're doing this because this is as much for us but when we come on with yourself I, w I can only speak for myself here and I, I'm not sure what Alfie would say but I want to give as much back so people can take just one thing just one thing away because everything that I say they're not going to agree with everything but if they can take one thing away that will help change their life for the better or implement it, then I feel I've created a miracle because I've changed someone's life. Mm -hmm. What about yourself, Alpha? How's it been today? To be honest with you, regardless whether I'm in front of a camera or I'm not in front of a camera, whether I'm on a podcast or not, the respect I have for my dad, I'm not ashamed of. That's how I've been brought up and that's how I think most sons should be towards their father. So, you know. Do you like to finish up on anything? No. Uh, have you got any cocaine or <laughs> <laughs> I can get that no problem mate, with the people I know who went and I've interviewed uh, let's have a party <laughs> <laughs> what about yourself Alf would you like to finish up on anything no listen just thank you very much for having me back James hopefully in the future we'll have another go in five years time or something yeah say, bro, sooner mate, quicker know? than that brother Alfie listen absolute pleasure nothing but love thank and respect you. for you same as yourself thank Alfie, you James pleasure mate, I wish you all the best for the future God bless you and take care thank thanks you. brother